The weather has deteriorated from bad to worse once again. 15 meter per second winds stopping us from loading our external torpedoes. After our failed attack on the Empire Freighter, we are down to three torpedoes ready for operations. Two in the bow and one in the stern. Eight eels are in external reserves and will be loaded once weather conditions improve. Our assignment in DB-75 is complete. Therefore, we will shift our patrol area northwest towards the American Gulf shipping lanes. Hopefully, we'll have better luck with our torpedoes this time. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome back to another Silent Hunter 3 video as we continue our patrol in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's go ahead and head to the map. Well, first and foremost, as you can see, the weather has gotten slightly better. It's still extremely choppy, and no one, no one has their rubbers on except that man. I guess he's the only smart one out here. But anyway, yeah, it's rather choppy, uh, but thankfully there's no more clouds or precipitation, so that is quite nice. Visibility is fairly good. On the map, we have completed our objective in grid DB75, so we're going to go ahead and move to the northwest here towards these three harbors, New Orleans, Biloxi, and Mobile, Alabama. Hopefully we can get some traffic out of here, and if not, we'll go down towards the Florida coast and into uh, the Caribbean down here, where maybe we might get some action as well. The torpedo situation is quite pitiful after that encounter with the Empire Freighter. Uh, we only have two forward torpedoes, they're both G7Es, and then one in the aft. I have no forward reserves or aft reserves, everything else is in the externals. So I need the weather to calm down a bit before I can <laughs> reload these. I think I can get them all reloaded in one night, uh, however, uh, that is all dependent on when these seas let up, because uh, three torpedoes, we're not going to be able to do too much with that. I was thinking... Uh, since this patrol might wrap up kind of soon. It's only May 14th. When did we depart? We departed. Okay it's, We've already been at sea a month, so uh, maybe not I was thinking we could resupply our torpedoes at U461 once again and head into the North Atlantic or maybe the South Atlantic here uh, To try to engage some convoys uh, a little later in the patrol just for a nice change of pace We'll see though, but for the time being we'll head towards these harbors in the Gulf and uh Hopefully have some success. As you can see, my crew is mighty tired. We're all, they're getting kind of exhausted. So let's go ahead and switch him out. Let him get some rest. <clears throat> and you can get some rest as well. Yeah, everyone's getting a little tire, tired. We've been at sea for a very long time. And uh, it's been quite stressful with all those uh, faulty torpedoes. But regardless, it should be uh, hopefully, hopefully quite exciting from here on out. Maybe we'll have a little bit better luck. So. We'll proceed onward. Fuel is at around 75%. We have plenty of it, especially since our resupply at U461 really topped us off and made the journey worth it. You know what? Let's go ahead and, while well, I got you here, let's go down to around 40 meters. Let's get this boat under and do a quick hydrophone check just to make sure we're all clear. <laughs> Unfortunately, the current torpedo situation is really limiting to what I can do and what I can attack. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I really regret launching all of those torpedoes at that Empire Freighter in the last episode. It's really a waste, especially looking back on it. Uh, in retrospect, I should have surfaced and used the dead gun on her uh, while she was just dead in the water, but... Uh, I didn't, I don't know. Uh, hindsight's 2020, as they say. Let's go ahead and increase this. I thought I heard something. I didn't think the weather would change so drastically so quickly, but uh, <laughs> oh, you never know out here. All right, so it sounds like it's pretty clear. I did not hear a squeak out there, so we'll stay submerged for a little bit just to avoid any air patrols or whatnot, probably an hour or so and surface and risk it and head towards these harbors like i said so i will cut here and get back to you guys very shortly ship spotted 327 degrees let's take a look here according to the map it was indeed a warship according to my officers but i do not see it it could be a patrol craft all right well let's go ahead and submerge let's do a quick ping real fast 
We were getting pretty close to the coast. Oh, a thousand meters. Let's go down to 60 meters. See, yep, warship heading northeast. Curious. <clears throat> Looks like he, he's not heading towards us, so that's a good sign to begin with. He didn't pick us up on radar or anything like that. All right, we are under. Let's go ahead and go down to slow speed so we don't get detected out here. And uh, take a listen on the hydrophones. There she is. very faint but she's at around 330 I think I'm gonna definitely hold off on taking a shot at this warship especially due to the current uh, torpedo situation it looks like my hydrophone operator is not picking her up let's get the uh, the professionals on there I could hear her there she is I can't uh, identify her however which is quite odd but Okay, well, anyway, that's a warship. I will keep my ear on it and make sure she doesn't turn towards me and pick me up and uh, kill me. But I'm just going to let her go. But that's good to know that there is a warship patrolling in this area. You know what? Let's go ahead and go to Periscope Depth and take a look and see what it is. Uh, see if it's a newer warship or just a, a Clemson class or something like that. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. She sounds very far away. Okay, we're currently at Periscope Depth. So scope, up scope, please. Let's see, where is she? Let's go ahead and bring her over here and let's send a ping out. I'm just kidding, I'm not suicidal. Not that suicidal, anyway. There she is. Yep, it's a four stacker. I know that might be extremely difficult for you guys to see, but I'm. I'm pretty sure that's four stacks right there so I think it's a Clemson class okay good to know we have that patrolling in the area so we're going to drop back down to 40 meters and stay quiet for the time being okay we have another warship spotted pretty much dead ahead there she is way out there and it looks like she is kind of heading towards us let's go down um, what's our depth here I, oh, shoot. <clears throat> oh shit, 32 meters. Okay, um, yeah, I was patrolling in the shallows here, obviously a mistake. Looks like we have some deeper water pockets dead ahead. Let's go down to periscope depth. Crap, she's heading southwest. Yeah, patrolling in the shallow water might actually be a mistake. Okay, let's get under. Let's get our good men on the hydrophone. And we'll just max out this the efficiency in the sonar room to 100% by getting the radio operator in there as well. Let's switch them out. I want the guy with all the metals to be our sonar operator. Okay, warship constant distance, zero, zero, 008 degrees. All head slow, rig for silent running. And hopefully she just sails on by here. Evading a destroyer in these shallow waters would be mighty difficult. Uh, no room to run, really. I guess we are fairly close. We're staying pretty close to the deep water, so I could make a dash for that if uh, the time came, but thankfully she's sailing onward. I am I'm gonna go ahead and not do this <laughs> I've learned my lesson, so I don't know if that's the same destroyer doing a routine patrol and we just came across them again But we're gonna go ahead and head towards the deeper water and stay in this deep pocket On something like that during the day and maybe at night we'll uh, maneuver into the shallows and see if we can find anything but uh, by day, we'll stay here. Well, it's been four hours since we encountered that last destroyer, whatever it was. And as you can see, weather conditions have gotten pretty bad. It seems like we sailed right into a storm, oh, which is unfortunate. It is, man, this is puts me in kind of a pickle here because destroyers have a tendency to sneak up on me in storms like this, especially in uh, 
you know, these shallow waters. So I'm going to go ahead and break off. Uh, hunting in this weather is extremely difficult to begin with and uh, not really worth it. So I'm hoping if we sail away, maybe we'll sail out of the storm and uh, um, get into some better weather conditions where we can reload these torpedoes. That is the hope here. So we're going to go ahead and disengage from this patrol area while this storm's going on since uh, patrolling here is just going to be futile. Um, yeah, so that is the current plan of action. It is still May 15th, so not much time has passed since our last encounter. So that's the current plan. Let's check on our crew, make sure everyone's hunky-dory. You get up there, my friend. You still go to rest, and I, I'm trying to do, <laughs> do better at... Uh, managing my crew I tend to neglect them and work them to death uh, let's see also since I added these extra sailors it has made it slightly more difficult uh, to manage them so there is that as well but we'll continue onward and I will keep updating you guys as usual so I just did a routine hydrophone check just to make sure no warships are sneaking up on me and we got a merchant contact extremely close only around uh, three kilometers away so I'm gonna yeah, go ahead all ahead full please and we're gonna gun it and try to get to this guy now visibility is piss poor so I don't know if I'll actually be able to catch him underwater um, also <laughs> it is a merchant ship and it most likely is armed so I, I Kind of afraid to make an approach like this on the surface. Oh, apparently we can see it according to uh, my hydrophone. I guess visibility is not as bad as I expected. You can see we're about two kilometers out. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try to overtake our friend here. I'm going six knots, so he must be going pretty slow in the storm if we're able to uh, maneuver here. So this is gonna have to be a fast attack here okay let's go ahead and slow down make our turn and raise our scope we need to be going under four knots to be able to see and then the vibrations of the periscope if we're going above four knots the periscope will be vibrating too much for us to be able to see anything and that's what I was trying to communicate there <laughs> words are hard there she is okay it's an American small tanker certainly is American. Let's go ahead and lock this bad boy in. I'm going to shoot one torpedo at it. Um, and I'm going to use impact this time. I'm not going to mess with the magnetic pistols in this C state. I think I missed it like an idiot. I'm sure some of you are screaming at your monitor. Yeah, yeah, I did miss it. Uh, it looks like she's going... Look at that bow wake. My god. She is, I think, hauling ass. <clears throat> Okay, large tanker, medium tanker, small tanker, lock in, range, we're going to do it the old fashioned way here, sounds good, angle on bow, it looks pretty close to 90, we'll plug in 90 for now, time, oh boy, I'll stop, this is not going to be accurate because we're moving, let's see, but I'll use my best guess, the length is 94 meters, yeah, I have a feeling she's... Ten knots. I can believe that. Lock on target. Speed. Speed, ten knots. Select. Hydrophone operator, give me one ping only. Oh my god, you moron. Alright. Yep, that's exactly what I got. Perfect. All right, tube one. Let's see, a draft on this thing. bad boy. Open tube one. Impact pistol. Tube one opening. All right, AOB is drastically changing. Tube one, fire. Okay, that is... I am not extremely confident in that solution. Oh, we'll see, that angle is also extremely poor. Let's go ahead and get this boat on the move since we're probably breaching. And let's go down to about 15 meters. Uh, it looks okay, actually. Although that angle is not good for our torpedoes. If we were launching Mark 14s out of an American boat, that'd be perfect right there. But with these G7 torpedoes, 
they do not like acute or obtuse angles. Where, where the hell is it? It ran deep. It ran deep. Wow. Wow. So, uh, God, I almost feel like it's 1939 and the. Okay, um, well, let's go ahead and continue onward. Whew. This is interesting. Um, it definitely has to do with the weather. The weather is fucking me here, but, uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and continue on course. That's just, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna waste any more, obviously. Um, I don't know if that would have hit anyway. Um, the reason I used impact is because last time our magnetics did so poor in the deep and the harsh weather So I figured I would try using Impact in the harsh weather and they it ran deep as well. So I'm not sure very interesting very peculiar um, I'll have to do some reading up on that <laughs> We'll see I'm sure I'm doing something wrong But anyway, we'll continue onward and I will get back to you guys shortly Shit, not again just short Oh my god. That's exactly what I was worried about. Oh no. Oh. Dear. Been hit. Start getting water out, out, out. Okay, the water is getting pumped out rapidly, rapidly. We're going under, currently at 18 meters. Oh my god. Let's go down to 100. That is frustrating. Alright, the water will be pumped out in around 50 seconds. Perfect. We're okay. All ahead, two thirds, please. Oh, that that was not pretty, though. Um, let's go ahead and get our good operators on the hydrophones. That was unexpected. <laughs> I'm I'm like way out here in the middle of nowhere. I was not expecting to really to come across anything, but these guys snuck up on me. That tends to happen quite frequently. <laughs> Go ahead and use some time compression here. Eight seconds till the water's out. Perfect. Water's gone. We'll continue to repair here. It looks like electric engines are damaged. Bow quarters. That's fine. I don't care about that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let's damage down here. Looks like decoy launcher. Um, that's going to take an hour to repair. Let's go ahead and just fix our engines. Okay, okay. No need to yell. And I might actually just go ahead and rig for solid running here. I do not hear the destroyers above. Oh man, it's going to be hard to hear with that leak. Oh, there they are. Oh, depth charges. Okay. They're, uh, they're dropping those depth charges behind us. Okay. Everything is under control for the time being. Yeah, it looks like they are behind us. I think we're going to be okay here. I am afraid to go much deeper than 130 meters, mostly because of the damage we have sustained to our pressure hole now. Go ahead and do some time compression here. I wish they would shut up that leak, that would be very nice for my ears. Now it looks like they're buggering off. The weather conditions are absolutely miserable, so hunting for them is going to be pretty difficult. They're not going to be able to hear much down here. Now let's go ahead. We're still hauling ass. Let's go ahead and drop our speed down. Make like a hole in the water. And while we continue to repair those engines. Do I have a repairman? Yes, you get on there. There we go. Much better. Much, much better. 
Let's go ahead and send these guys. Get some guys in there. They'll help repair. Okay, we're good. We're good. Um, these ashores are piddling around to the north of us. Oh, there we go. Compressor intact. Perfect. The boat is definitely under control. I might actually... You know what? Let's go ahead and rig for silent running now. I really just wanted them to fix that leak before I ran it. Uh, rig for silent running. Make a lot of noise. Very easy to hear. Here we go. Perfect. And we'll hang out here at around 100 meters. I think we'll be okay. They laid their depth charges way behind us. So I'll keep listening and keep you guys updated as these destroyers hunt us. Okay, it's only been about 10 minutes or so and they're already moving away and breaking off contact. So I think we are in the clear here, thankfully. Uh, we got pretty lucky there. So I've learned my lesson. I'm going to stay submerged <laughs> during the daytime, uh, especially in these weather conditions where visibility is so poor. Uh, this is going to become a habit later in the war anyway. So I might as well start doing it now. So we'll stay underwater until nighttime where we'll surface. And I really, it's May 18th now, and the weather is still bad. Uh, we did have a spell uh, there where the seas were nice and calm, but it was still raining. And unfortunately, I could not reload my externals in the rain either. So I really hope the weather gets better because, uh, man, this is, this is kind of frustrating here. Okay, we have a ship spotted. Somewhere, there she is. Looks like a small tanker of sorts, and it is... Oh, there are... Whoa, there's two ships. Um, let's see, where, where are they <laughs> again? Okay, there's one right there, and then there's a small one. We're definitely going to go for the larger ship that is apparently heading straight for us. Uh, looks like it's heading due east, so let's go ahead and go down to periscope depth at the moment. Our radio operator picked up a signal way out here and uh, I just tracked them <clears throat> to this position. According to this, they are heading medium. Let's go ahead and make a track heading east. So, in my free time... Oh, and as you can see, the weather is obviously not better and I don't think it was going to get better, so I went ahead and decided to go into the Caribbean instead of wasting more time up here. Um, it is now May 22nd. My god, this storm has been going on forever. Um, I know there's another fix out there for the weather, so I might do something. Uh, I might install that after this patrol. Also, I looked into the torpedo failures, and uh, in the H.SIE hard-coded fixes manual, it tries, it's, this is from it, it says it tries to model the torpedo crisis until 1942, and also tries to model duds resulting from too shallow of depth settings. Um, and these depth settings are wind dependent. So if it's extremely windy and extremely choppy and you set your torpedo shallow, you have a higher probability of that torpedo running deep. So I probably set it in that, uh, in that like crisis area wherever it's very choppy and uh, the torpedo uh, malfunctioned. June 1940, there's a 25% chance that the torpedo will be a dud using the impact pistol. Uh, till June 1942, there's a 10% chance that the torpedo will be a dud or, you know, run deep. Uh, there's a 10% chance until June 1942. So I guess the RNG gods just really hate my guts and uh, that's why they're running deep. Slow down a little bit and we will try to engage these ships here with our one G7E. Oh my god. Uh, maybe we can do enough damage here. <clears throat> Uh, the seas are pretty choppy, so this could be another dud once again, um, but I'm going to go ahead and take the shot regardless, and while we're here, let's go ahead, we'll just use the 315 method uh, to establish speed. Go ahead and start the clock, please, and let's go ahead and close in here. Looks like the ship's heading northeast now. Don't know might be better actually to take out this small ship right here. We have a better shot at it. Let's take a look through the scope. Oh, but that is so appealing. Oh my god. <laughs> the tanker. I might actually disengage and try to re-engage here. But we will 
into a better firing position. I'm actually going to do that. I am not going to take a shot like this. It's too bad. Uh, the angle is pretty... Actually, she's turning. All right, closing in on three minutes. She is... Maybe they're zig... They are zigzagging, maybe. I don't know. This is peculiar. All right, let's go ahead and mark that position there. 14 knots. Wow. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and turn. I wonder if she still is going 14 knots. Let's try to... Actually, I might be able to take my shots. Or shot with singular torpedo. Okay, she's heading... Okay, let's go ahead and slow down. She's heading straight for me. She actually lined herself up perfectly. We're not going to be able to see until we drop below 4 knots here. Tanker. Let's go ahead and lock on target and take a look. Let's lower our scope and get this boat a little deeper in the water. <clears throat> Let's see a whale factory ship? No, it's a tanker. It's back here. Medium tanker, 8,000 tons. God, that is so juicy. Tor depth, is, the draft is 10 meters. So I think I'm going to use a magnetic, a magnetic pistol, and we'll set it to 11 meters. Hopefully, that is good enough for, and hopefully, <laughs> uh, it doesn't run deep here. Up scope a little bit more. The ship is still, yeah, it's just adopted a zigzag course, which definitely makes my job a little more hard, a little more difficult here. We are shooting from extremely close range. Let's go ahead and start reversing. She's turning away. Bad timing. Okay, lock on target. Thankfully, we're shooting magnetics, so let's see. Range is around 450 meters. Angle on bow. So, speed. I want to get another speed check here. We'll plug in 14 knots for the time being, although I'm not too confident in that. Let's see how long, 167. So we'll just go by the 150. Yeah, 14 knots. All right, lock on target, 14 knots set. She's turning away. Yeah, it's this does not look too good for me. Yeah, I am not a fan of that. So we're probably going to reposition here. I do not want to waste my single torpedo that I have loaded, so let's go ahead and maneuver around here, and we'll break off visual contact, and I'll try to get ahead of them once again. Their little zigzag pattern here is really odd. I have no idea what the heck they're doing. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I'm going to go ahead and reposition my boat here. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to miss with our last forward torpedo for the foreseeable future, because this weather is not getting any better. So I'm going to go ahead and go around them, get in front, and hopefully be in a decent position for a torpedo attack. Okay, I've tracked them pretty much all day, and uh, it's currently nighttime, as you can see, and we can just see the tanker emerging from the fog out there. It's actually kind of cool looking. I hope you guys can see that. But we are going to set up our shot now. It looks like the, our, the tanker took the lead position and is not zigzagging now, which is fantastic to see uh, because before the little merchant ship I don't know we don't have visual on the merchant ship just yet was uh, in the lead position and uh, the tanker was zigzagging but it looks like they have traded off for the time being let's go ahead and slow down nice and easy there now it looks like the tanker is still zigzagging I botched that up once again let's see I want the tanker to be running nice and straight whenever we uh, get our time. It looks like they've traded places. God damn it. Okay, let's go ahead and start the timer here. Let's see, what is the tanker doing? Looks like it's coming sh What the hell? Okay, let's go ahead and begin reversing. <clears throat> Three minutes. God, this tanker is causing all sorts of headaches for me with its wonky maneuvers. Here we go. 
Speed is 11 knots during a zig and zag. Lock on target. Stop this. Okay, let's go ahead and set everything up. Angle on bow. It's at about uh, 40 degrees. Speed, 11 knots. Range, we will get momentarily. Hmm. Moving fast. Let's go ahead and try to get it now. God, it really is moving fast. Okay. You know, we can probably use the, uh, Ooyagd here. I think I'm gonna use the Ooyagd. It's just quicker. Let's see. I can barely see it. It's very dark tonight. Okay, start time. The length of this guy is 167 meters. Okay. It isn't at an odd angle. I think it's going really fast. <clears throat> 150, 15 knots. Okay, we're gonna set in 14. 14 knots. Set. Tube 4, we're gonna launch at 11 meters. Impact, magnetic pistol. Open tube number 4. Oh my god, our gyro angle's already so far off because... Oh no, it's getting there. Okay, give me give me a ping now. What is the distance to target? Oh my god, I hate I hate how he does this. Just over a thousand meters. Alright. Tube four. Police hit. Fire. There we go. Two four is away. Now hopefully it's not running extremely deep. I guess we'll find out. We'll watch the map. It actually looks fairly. It looks like it'll hit. Runtime. We got a few seconds to impact. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That is so rewarding after so, so much, uh, <laughs> you know, pain. That thing blew to high heaven. Oh my goodness. That was... That's extremely rewarding. That our magnetic pistol went off with our one bow torpedo. After how many torpedoes? Five? Have been complete whiffs. Alright, let's get under rather quickly. I am very happy right now. It was definitely a very good decision to go back around and uh, try to re-engage here. It paid off. Patience pays off in this game. And I noticed that. Whenever I get uh, eager or try to rush things, that's when uh, things go terrible. What the hell? Why are you yelling? What's wrong? Everything's fine. Everything's okay. Work for silent running. Just so you'll stop screaming. Thank you. Oh man, that's a nice tanker too. How many tons was that? See, medium tanker, 8,112 tons. Not too shabby for one torpedo. Alright, so <laughs> I guess that'll put an end to this here episode. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for putting up with the terrible <laughs> torpedoes as well. It is quite frustrating, but uh, as you can see, it really does pay off. That the whole deck of this ship is just engulfed in flames. My goodness. Well, thankfully, the game knew we were having a bad time and rewarded us with some fireworks. So I'm going to obviously let this little guy go. Uh, I'm not going to waste a torpedo on him. Especially since he's going so fast. And uh, we only have one left. I'm really hoping the weather conditions improve uh, here in the next few days so I can finally 
load my externals. But uh, anyway, that is going to be the end here. Thank you guys for watching as always. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you guys on the next one.